right. Welcome everyone. Today's workshop is going to be on why use Op City with Eddie, partner agent here at Best Homes Real Estate. But Eddie, if you don't mind kind of um, introducing yourself or anyone who doesn't know you and to kind of the gist about what you're going to be covering today. Hi, my name is Ed Ramanoff. I've been an agent with Best Homes Real Estate for almost a year now, and I've been using, I would say, Op City since April. So uh, the way Op City works is uh, you get a notification to your phone once you claim the lead. Uh, if you claim it, they'll give you a call. If you don't, they'll tell you you didn't claim it. And you guys have to pick up the phone right away. If you guys don't pick up the phone, it goes on to the next person and your score will go down in Op City. There we go. So that's the general overview on why you should watch and why you should hop on today on Zoom. But welcome. Good morning, Alan Silvers and Calvin. Good morning. But it's all you, Eddie. Go ahead and um, start your slide. So with uh with op, if you're not a big fan of uh, like doing cold calling, door knocking, open houses, Opsit is a great lead source on uh, just basically the sitting there and just claiming a lead and you'll get a call straight to your phone. You'll, you'll have an Opsit rep introduce you each other over the phone and you guys just will talk on what your guys' plans are moving forward. Uh, the referral fee that OpCity will take from you guys is a 38% uh, percent referral fee. If you're a partner agent, uh, uh, Best Homes will take a 15% referral fee. But if you're an entrepreneur agent, uh, you'll, you'll still have the same transaction fee. The reason you should still use OpCity, it is a pretty big referral fee. It's better to get a client rather than no client to close that deal under your belt. Uh, when you first sign to, when you first sign up to, on Opsity, the leads won't be the greatest. You'll probably get a lot of land deals, a lot of uh, rentals. But keep keep going. Uh, you'll you'll get leads. Once you close that first lead, the leads start getting better, and the quality of lead you'll get more quality leads and more volume then. And uh, you have to keep updating it every seven days in the notes. If you don't update it every seven days, they will pause your account. And each and they have different types of options there. Once you speak to once you sp speak to the lead, say you spoke. Once you met, click met and moving so on and so forth. Eddie, can you go into the process when you get registered with Op City? You are sent almost like a survey, and then you also select and filter what kind of leads you want to receive. Can you give us a general overview what that's like and then to um, whether or not you should really limit it or I'll kind of chime in as well in regards to that. And then I put you on mute, so we'll unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, so there's a couple options. If you just wanna work with buyers, have the buyer checkbox only checked. If you wanna work with buyers and sellers, have both checkboxes. Investors, uh, land deals, mobile homes, and land deals. If you want to work all of those, have all of those checked off. If you don't want to work one of them, uh, turn the one off. But you don't, when you have a meter, if you turn one off, the meter usually uh, goes a little less, and you may get a little less quality leads then. Okay, and then for anyone, um, just kind of a, a plug in regards to anyone who's already in Op City. I've kind of spoken to the Op City reps and they always suggest to kind of um, update your settings, maybe even sometimes broaden them, including area or rentals, just so that you also pop up back in the algorithm. Um, they do have a really nice help you can call where you can kind of chat or email them if for any reason you're not getting any Op City leads. But just wanted to kind of point that out that the more you narrow it, it's almost like a buyer, right? The more you narrow it, the less um you know leads that might come your way but like eddie said in the beginning you're gonna get some leads that you know are a little different rental leads under 60k not looking for land we had one of our agents to close two three three land deals um all op city leads and then it just again kind of goes up 
as as you stay with them. And then we have agents like Marge, one of our top producers over in Prescott Valley, who gets multi-million dollar leads from Op City. Do you have to pay them 38%? Yes, but she still walked away with a lot of money. So just know that there is a huge range of people that they come across no different than us. So yeah, I would say that the biggest thing is to update those notes because if you don't update those notes, they will pause your account and you will not get leads anymore. And you obviously don't want that to happen. And also another big thing is that uh, you want to claim the lead as soon as possible because you are competing with about 10 agents. So whoever the first agent is to claim it will get that call. For example, if that agent does not pick up the phone, or if they drop the lead, whoever the next agent in line was will get that lead. So are there any questions so far? Then once, once you uh, will once you go under contract, you'll tell them you went under contract that obviously will send you some stuff. Once you, once you come closer to closing, they'll send you a list on what they need you to send them in. Once closing comes, you'll send them that those stuff and then uh, you'll get, you'll get paid. That's basically all what Opsity basically is. <laughs> easy breezy and he's love it um so just kind of to recap everyone op city is a, a kind of a source we're connected with here at best homes as do a lot of other brokerages and it's realtor.com they book leads they call real estate agents that are at perimeter and if you're you're if you're in that perimeter you'll be one of those agents that's reached out to like eddie said and you want to grasp it as fast as you can so that in turn, you start connecting with that, with that lead. Once you connect with that lead, you want to consistently update the notes. If you do not want the lead, you want to release the lead. Um, so that in turn, they don't think you're just one hoarding it or two not updating it. And then your account turns red. As a brokerage, we do get um, rated percentage wise on who has the top conversions. So typically, you know, if you, if you, are like, eh, I don't know if I really dig this. Let us know. We can like, you know, we can kind of just pause your account so that in turn our percentage goes up because the stronger the percentage is for the brokerage or leads that might come across your way. It is an investment, but again, this is the time someone is spending the overhead that realtor.com has to pay the people who are booking the appointments. And then it also self-trains you to really respect the leads and how to enter the nodes and how to communicate with the lead properly. Um, now, Eddie, I will poke your brain in regards to how to close with it. But as I think someone in the chat put, how do I register? Email me, Melissa, at besthomesrealestate.com to get you registered. You will receive an email notification from Op City. In turn, you will kind of put how many closings you've had. And you want to put the perimeters of where you're working and where you where you can assist. And again, don't be too, too, too detailed because then you kind of lower that. But when it's time for closing, Eddie, what does that process look like? Um, what is there anything unique in regards to it? I know I think you've already closed one before and you're closing another one at any time now, but anything to add in that? I mean, it's basically the it's the same thing once you once you close, but once you close uh, once you get a settlement statement, that's what they're at. That's what Opposite will ask you to send them. If they get any other additional documents, they will ask you. And usually they'll uh, it takes about 14 days, they say, but it should take quicker than that and for them to update that. And that lead moves over to the closed file. And then your then your percentage goes up with them and you get better quality leads. Great. Yeah. And then as far as the closing department, we do um, the entire thing gets paid out from title to Best Homes Real Estate. And in turn, I will process those commissions and issue the funds to UpCity. Um, from 
uh, it could take sometimes weeks for them to update their accounts to so just know. Normally I will add screenshots or confirmations that they were paid out in the broker mint file that you can always reference. And then two, we'll, norm we'll aim to CC you on any constant communication, but just know there is some love there where we, we need constant updates with them and kind of, we have to poke them every now and then so that they just update the account per se. But um, Alan Silvers, good morning. Anything from you? I know you kind of have fun with the uh, city leads. Anything to add to the presentation um, or anyone who's interested in working op city leads? Um, what do you need from us on an op city lead? Do you need the uh, do you need to know going in? I mean, do I need to advise my TC and have that put in the broker mint going in or uh, you know, Op City has this, um, they have a form uh, that gives you their transaction ID. Uh, do you get that direct or does that, do you pull that from Brokerman or how's that, that work in Best Homes? Uh, great question. We really don't need anything. We just ask that you update all your notes with OpCity. And then in turn, when you are under contract with an OpCity lead is when you start getting the brokerage involved in your TC. So she opens up the broker man account like you would any other client. However, if you can um, inform us that it is an OpCity lead, normally we'll always find out towards the end because Op City sends like an email every other week where it's like, hey, Alan Silver's on a contract and up, you know, so that they make sure that they get paid. So they're very organized in regards to communicating with the brokerage that there is an upcoming closing with X agent, X client. So there's really not much on your end, but if you want to be kind of an advance notice, you can add that to the TC and say, hey, there is an, it is an Op City lead. Here's that. Um, I think it's almost like a one pager on on the commission breakdown because there are times where when it is under a hundred grand, the the fee owed to Op City is thirty two percent, not thirty eight. So that's in unique cases when you do help people under a hundred or hundred um hundred something grand. So just kind of a fun. It's a hundred a hundred fifty. If it's one hundred fifty or less, I believe it's thirty two percent. If it's over one fifty, it's thirty eight. Yeah, I, I <clears throat> I've used Obsidian. I have eleven closed with them, um, but it's kind of funny. My eleven closes add up to five hundred and sixty-eight, and March has fourteen. No, sorry, sixteen that add up to seven point one May. So <clears throat> my problem with Obsidian has been, and this this, I mean, March and I are in the same area, but my problem has been when you do the land deals, 20,000, 30,000, you don't get bumped up. When you do, uh, I think the highest one, uh, the highest one I've had, I think is 200,000 something, and you get bumped into that range. You're not gonna get, um, many opportunities at anything bigger until that one rare occasion where you do happen to hit it first um, because you know up here maybe Marge is asleep or something um you know and and up here um it's almost like it's Marge and I against Realty One Realty One up here is is all over Pop City I mean I could swear they have someone just sitting there doing nothing but but Op City <laughs> You know. Yeah. Well, good call out. So um, for anyone who doesn't know, Alan Silvers is in Prescott and Marge is as well. So in that area, there is less clients looking sometimes in that area or Tucson or some of the smaller cities within was in at least for us. Um, and that's where to to Alan's point is like, yeah, the competition is steep. When your phone rings, you grab it. And that is, you know, the 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 rule of thumb with online leads is you definitely want to communicate with them within the first five minutes. And um, even if you are, even if they're your own personal leads. Uh, but this again was just kind of a nice overview to the point on how it works. It's important at all times to have multiple outlets and avenues on how to generate business, how to generate leads. And this, um, to what Alan's kind of talking about, some of the figures of between Marge and him, is like, you know, it's again, just quantity. It's to give you some additional 
opportunities. And it's just when you do end up adding this, just kind of following the system and the process. Eddie's really comfortable with it. Marge, Alan, you can kind of connect with some of these agents for some additional tips. We have a pre-recorded workshop here in our Facebook group. Click on guides, maybe, or in the search bar, that little little search bar that's in there, and type in Op City. And we did a little workshop similar to this with Marge and Linda Dubois. And they again went over their process, some tips, some tricks on what helped them kind of move up the chain or the ladder. You can call Op City all the time, but it is something connected directly with them. We do not have any type of control per se on how the leads are sent out or how everybody's kind of filtered. It's all Op City. What we do is we create the account, we let you guys know, we pay them, and um, we ensure we kind of aim to suggest to constantly update your your um, notes so that the brokerage also doesn't scope red <laughs> so that we all get leads, right? But um, any questions from uh, anyone on the call? Andrew, Calvin, Abby, Ricardo, Ms. Lisa, Michael. We also have a lender on the call. So if you guys have any lender related questions, we can chime in with some of that fun stuff as well. Oh, there's one thing I would add just you have to yes. be careful with it because I got burned a little bit. Op City, when you, the moment you accept a lead, that is your lead, and you begin working with them, mm -hmm. you have that lead for two years. So you may do, and this is what happened to me, you do multiple transactions with them or their family. And if your client happens to be on the transaction that you may be doing for their kids, you're going to owe Op City. And Op City is going to reach out as soon as they get wind that that person is untitled. And you just have to be aware of it. It cost me three grand. And I tried to fight Op City before. This is about the time I joined Best Homes, and I tried to fight Op City on it. And just because one parent happened to be on the title that was my client, um, I wound up owing on on a transaction. And I can't. And I'm I'm deliberately. And it's funny. I I have a had a listing for the same family, and uh, listing expired. And I told them I'm not taking the listing until December when they're off up city. And they're fine with it because they understand that, you know, it's a little ridiculous to keep paying up city when it's the agent who's doing the work. So just kind of be careful of that. Yep. No, thanks, Alan. No, uh, for sure. So when Op City sends you a lead, there is an agreement that is on there and it is their lead for the X amount of time. And even in the event you would change brokerages or something happens or it's, you know, you still uh, were connected to this specific lead for, by Op City. So that's in turn where you still owe them that referral fee in a sense. No different than any other referral. If you as an agent refer a client out to someone in another state, another city, you also have a time frame on when that lead expires. So also kind of a fun random plug in regards to how referrals work is that when you refer a lead out, there's an expiration date and you could be for this transaction or all transactions that is related to this particular name of the person in that referral form here at the brokerage. But since we're in the topic of referrals, don't forget, guys, we uh, you can referral to something, advertise and leverage, make notes out. We just had a boot camp yesterday on buyer consultations and never always, always forget to um, never forget to ask if people know of anyone who are looking to buy. You can also help people throughout the country um, through, and have go to states. We are part of a franchise, First Class Real Estate, um, here at Best Home. So the beauty behind is we have extended family. I call them like cousins, and they're very heavy in the East Coast. And you here and there get invited to some of their ac Zoom activities or in-person activities throughout the East Coast. Our commercial division with Derek Stilwell, he uses um, First Class Real Estate for the same reason that it is throughout the country. And in that case, that's when all you can also do referrals with them and keep a note similar to Op City, put a kind of a time frame on how, how long that lead is connected to you. But 
Referrals is a great additional source selling things like Opsity. If you're looking to purchase leads with Realtor.com or Zillow, um, that in itself is like its own topic and there's investments. And I think maybe we can even discuss that on a mastermind. I'll probably poke at some people tomorrow if you're interested or if anybody wants to chime in in regards to that. But that's another way you can pay a entity to generate leads for you that are somewhat warm or booked and you just kind of call or they're kind of just cold and they just kind of registered with them and they sent you some leads. No different than when you're doing Facebook leads. But if you want to generate free online leads, watch some of our pre-recorded workshops that we've done. One of my favorites will always be Virginia Stewart's that's here in our Facebook group on organically generate leads um, for free per se. But you're the one doing the work. You got to hit those phones and call, call, call. As um, the best rate team says, you know, right now you have to double, triple down on how many people you normally call um, so that you get in communication with people. And that's the beauty behind this. If you've ever um, interested in virtual assistance where they can call for you, that's on an investment in your business. If you really kind of want to look into that, if you're like, I don't want to do the phones, I don't have time, I don't have the patience. Um, and that's where you can do stuff like this. Um, Zillow, Realtor.com, pay a VA, pay an inside sales associate, or you could do you could do it with your time and hit up those phones. But anything else? I know we kind of went through that in a little brief. Anything from you, Michael? Any questions? Michael always has great things. I love when he's on. Thank you. I, I guess I kind of was wondering how the, the, why does it work this way that, that you start off getting sort of not so great leads and then you start getting better and better leads? Um, I guess I'm assuming it's because you want to test the, 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 the agency if they're any good at this or not and give it to the people who are doing a good job. But um, I just wonder if that has to do with the algorithm or, or I don't know, I'm sort of a nebulous question, but I'm just curious if you covered this already, I apologize. Yeah, uh, the reason they do that, obviously, yeah, is because one is because they already have agents that close many deals and they already trust those agents. So they know they'll communicate with the clients and closes, close those deals. Since you're a new agent and haven't closed any deals with them, that's why they give you not the greatest leads at first, if that makes sense. Sorry, I figured that. It's just, um, you know, I just wanted to hear more about it. That's all. So, yeah. That's a great call out. So there is a something that you want to put in your KPIs or something that you measure as a real estate agent, or if you end up running a team, or it's something you want to hold yourself accountable as the time goes within the industry, especially when you're new, you want to measure your conversion rate. So if I have conversations today, I was, and that's, I would never do it by the way, but if I sat next to Alan and we both hit the phones and both calling the same thing, I can assure you he has a higher conversion rate and I have a lower conversion rate. And then you start measuring, am I talking too much? Am I too aggressive? Am I not asking the questions? And that's how you're able to measure your conversion rate. So as an entity, Op City ha um, measures your conversion rate. So if they send Melissa 15 leads and out of the 15 leads, she's only closed one. That is my conversion percentage, one divided by 15. If I send Eddie um, 10 leads and he converts three, he has a higher conversion rate. Someone like Marge, her conversion rate is really high. So statistically speaking, when Opsity sends her a lead, it's probably going to go under contract sooner and close somehow and that goes into consideration where most of these are pretty warm not all of them are pre-qualified for the record but most of, some of them are and then you give them to a top agent who has a high conversion rate that agent can typically get them under contract very soon compared to an agent who's one just showing where their conversion rate are or they shown within the months or years that their conversion rate is really low so I love the topic because in general you do want to measure conversions and I don't think it's spoken about enough and I don't know if we hold ourselves accountable as a business owner on conversion so I'm sure it find your pillars, label them in your CRM. If you use KV Core, Sync, or anything, even if you have an Excel spreadsheet, you want to start making labels. Where did they come from? Were they open house leads? Were they sign calls? Were they people, your 
fear, which we call SOI, and label them as much as you can from for door knocking, farming. It's always very important to label, 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 and measure where you got the most leads. You can even get really fancy and have graphs. But in order for you to be like, I door knocked a hundred doors. And out of 100, I got one solid lead. And then you're able to see, is this a platform that I want to continue investing on? Or where in, where do I have the opportunity? I keep on calling for sell by owners day in, day out, but my conversion rate's still very low. That's where I have something concrete where I can talk to maybe a for sale by owner um, specialist who's somewhat part, who's kind of aced it converted a higher rate i can sit right next to them or we can just role play whatever the case might be but conversions is a very important percentage that you want to metrics and that's where it kind of goes back to the beginning where i'm saying the reason i one of the things i love about op city is the fact that they really train you as the agent to um put in the notes to keep communication with them or else you turn red and then you have this like habit and then you do it with your own lead and that is one of those things that you want to treat every lead that you come across with the same level of respect and intensity within yourself but great question michael thank you also another thing i did want to mention about op city op city will introduce you guys they do work with lenders also so sometimes when you claim a lead they either are about to talk to a lender or already spoke to a lender. So you guys are kind of, you guys, you guys can work with a lender if you want, but you guys don't have to. And they, they do the same thing with title. So I, I do have a All question. Right. This is Abby. Um, I do have a question for Eddie and Alan. Like how long did it take you guys to build it up to where you were getting the more quality leads? Cause I'm just getting hit with nothing, but $800 leases right now. And it's really hard for me to want to get out there to, you know, find the sitters to put in the time to make like 70 bucks after the fees and stuff are said and done. So how many transactions did you have to do before you really saw a improvement in the leads that you're getting? I mean, for me personally, it took me, it took me one transaction to make, make that happen. You just have to stay consistent with it because like for me, it took me five months to close my first lead. I got over like a hundred, I wouldn't say over a hundred leads I had to claim in order to close my first one. So that's what you kind of have to do. The more you, the more leads you claim, the more, the more, more better, the better quality leads you'll get. Because if you claim like a couple leads, the first couple won't be the greatest, but you just have to keep working because if you get like 50, 60 leads, one of those leads should be good. And you, it may take you five months to work with them, which what happened to me. Great, thank you. Yeah, I would just add, <clears throat> I mean, I'll tell you, I'm at, uh, I guess this speaks to my closing rate, I don't know. Um, in three years, I've had 688 leads that I won and 11 closed. Um, I did the same as you. I put, I, I clicked and, and activated leasing. I activated everything, um, but I quickly uh, clicked off the leasing one because it'll drive you kind of nuts. I mean, it gets your foot in the door with Op City, but it, it, I would say I had probably a hundred of those that I won that were leasing. And yeah, it's like when it's all said and done, you're going to get $50. Um, so I quickly got out of that one. Also, another thing I do want to add, if you have leasing turned on, just try to convert those people into HP or Divi, like the rent to own programs, and you, you'll get paid your full commission still, rather than the $800 thing. That's okay. kind of what I, that's what, I, that's what I ended up doing with one of my leases. Okay, great. Thank you. Are you guys having more luck? I mean, off topic, are you guys having more luck with, um, with home partners now that like the market shifted a little bit because I've completely like I completely lost two clients because of the way that they did business and like just their model behind everything and I they were so upset with me as being like their face so now that the market is slow so I just completely cut them off so now that the market is slowed down 
and the prices aren't so high and maybe the rents aren't so high, are you guys having a better outcome with H with home partners? I would say for me, with HP, it's a little harder to get those pe people qualifying now because they require a 620 credit score. Right. I mean, if you have a 620 credit score, you most rather uh, just buy at that point right. than right. go through HPA. It's just, it's been a little harder just because uh, I guess I have to slow down and HPA just became stricter on their policies. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for hopping on today's workshop on Op City. Um, if Home Partners of America subject kind of intrigued you, type in Home Partners of America in our Facebook group and anything that we've ever taught uh, is on there. But to Abby's point, they have kind of changed their perimeters. It is an entity in itself. So whenever you do recommend someone to a, another source of how to get a home, even if you like find them a rental and the landlords like the land from hell, <laughs> right? Sometimes you can't kind of help it. Um, but for the most part, you know, you always kind of want to be very communicative about the fact that this is the entity. It is a third party company um, and it's just an outlet on how to get you into a home or you can go out and see houses off the for rent, but um, on the MLS and whatnot. So kind of help kind of uh, to uh, Kind of perfect how how to communicate where some of these sources are from. Um, not to say that's easy at all, or uh, but sometimes it's just you know you just never know what's going to happen with some of these vendor partners. So. Um, Home Partners of America is a, an additional way of also getting your clients into a home. And it's a fun program. Um, and it's, uh, there's another one called Dig Homes, which is probably one of the most marketed ones out there. If you're interested in how to generate leads through them, um, just do some homework and we'll probably do a workshop with them probably in December because um, we've done a few. But on Wednesday next week, we do have a workshop with Best Rate Home Loans on FHA Renovation Loans. So I really don't know much about it. So I'll personally be on the workshop on Wednesday with uh, Ricky and with George at Best Rate Loans. Um, tomorrow we do have a mastermind at 10 a.m. If you're interested on just hopping on, ask some questions related to any topic that we can help. Our broker will be on there. I'll be on there and some of our top agents as well. But we'll leave you off to your busy day. Thank you so much. And a big thank you and good job, Eddie, for hosting today's workshop on how to use Op City. Thank you guys. Enjoy your day.